Welcome to another weekly edition of the Hellraiser Vlog with Mickey Helliot. We're jumping from hotels. Last week we were in the Millennium, this week we're in the Park Lane Hotel. Mickey, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. We are going to do or have a chat about all things Hellraiser this week. Um, I'd like to That's kick good. off with Dan Woodgate and Wadi Camacho. That is a fight that is getting a lot of attention. A lot of people want to see now. Wadi, some I uh, would say it's controversial to start with the way the approach he's had. He's not having a single ticket. Um, he has not spoken or made any kind of communication on the social media uh, platforms. Social media. He's not done anything to push the fight at all. Um, to me, that's bad form for boxing generally because mm. boxing promoters and fighters and everyone should support each other. But also, I understand that this is a competition, it's a business. Um, they lost the purse bids, Goodwin Promotions lost the purse bids after sort of making a big hoo ha about you know, backing Waddy. Mm. And they then uh, didn't. And uh, we did back Woodgate, so we got the fight. They don't need to sell any tickets, obviously, you're seeing it's a huge bill. You've got mm. like 20 plus fights on there. Yeah, sold out. Um, at York Hall. I'm really happy. My first show at York Hall of the year, and um, it, it's going to be absolutely banged out. We've got some really good fights, and on the same night, we've got Woody Woody. We've also got two undefeated fighters in uh, Tamuka Mucha and Tommy Tier, who's been built up in a lot of Hellraiser shows, mm. uh, boxing each other. Um, that's a good fight. Two unbeaten guys. I mean, with the bookmakers, Mooch is a big, big favourite. Um, my opinion is probably a lean towards Mooch, but Tommy T can beat him. I mean, he has a good night and Mooch has a bad night. Tommy T can beat him, so we'll see. He's impressed with Tommy T. Got and better and better as he's gone along. And Asinia Byfield, will he be on that? Asinia Maybe a Byfield, southern area? Who um, boxed the other week on my uh, Mayfair Sporting Club show. Interesting, Asinia has. He came to me in the first place with his trainer saying, no, I can't be sell tickets, I'd like to be built up. He, We've got him eight wins in a year. <laughs> Most big ticket sellers don't get eight wins in a year. No. He's now uh, going to be fighting for, for titles and we've got a whole load of things lined up for him. And one of the things we'd have, and he's from Reading, same as Tamuka Mucha, so Tamuka Mucha wins this, um, there is no reason why we, we wouldn't then go maybe and do a show in Reading, you know, big fight, um, two Reading guys boxing each other, who I know that would that would sell, in, mm. in Reading it certainly would. Mm. And the senior Byfield has got better and better and better, he's trained by a guy called Craig Piner, and um, he, he, we, we've organised a lot of sparring with him, and you know, I, I, whenever I can I try and help him out, advise him, give him sort of things that maybe will help him progress quicker, but um, I, I'd have to put off the credit of his training with Craig because he, he's come on and on and on and he's got better and better. I think boxing regularly is one thing. You know, these guys that fight like two, three times a year, by the time they have their second fight, they're having their first fight over again. A senior is just fit all the time. I can ring him now and say, oh, I've got a fight for him in three days. Don't have to send him tickets, just go and box and he'll, yeah, I'm there. And uh, he's won all his fights, he's done his side. He's really impressed me. Very slippery, tricky, unusual, very unusual style. Very awkward, difficult to, to hit. Quite strong. One is last fight by stoppage. Mm. And um, yeah, that's that's a fight. I think probably on the London Live we would try and put uh, yeah. that fight on. You know, senior against um, the winner of Tamukamucha against. If if they'll take it, you know, they might they might want to go for an easier option first and then come. Who knows? But well, that's that's what we'd be aiming for. Big fights on the horizon for a senior Byfield. If we can just go back quickly to Dan Woodgate and Wadi Camacho, you mentioned. Well, he's been quite quiet on social media, he hasn't sold really any tickets. Quiet. Can you go into a bit more depth about that? Why why, why do you think that is? Because I know Waddy's not a I think quiet my, my My honest reason why, I think they're a bit embarrassed that they put themselves in a situation where they, they've talked about, you know, this, that and the other to Waddy, and then he's fighting as the away fighter. Um, Are you talking about Steve Goodwin now? Yeah, I think Steve, he signed with Steve Goodwin under the sort of... Uh, Promised that he was going to sort of um, really be looked after, and then he's been plunged in. So I think there might be some ill feeling. I've actually I texted Steve saying like, "How many tickets do you want for for Waddy?" He said, "I'll speak to Waddy," and then he texts me back saying he doesn't want one ticket. Strikes me as very strange because the the fights that uh, you'll call in East London, where Waddy is from, and uh, he hasn't, he's not going to have one ticket. So um, I do. And he's a ticket seller, you know, he, normally he's, he's been, from the start, he's gone as a ticket seller, so, 
uh, there's obviously been a decision. I'm not selling one ticket. You know that uh, maybe stubbornness, maybe um, the fact that they're knowing those has been pushed out of joint a little bit. But um, having made all the hoo ha about looking after Waddy, then what Waddy ends up. Mm. Hopefully, as your way fighter, and I don't dislike Waddy at all. But obviously, I, I do look after Woodgate as much as I can, and I hope Woodgate beats him. Of course. Tell me about where the winner of that fight goes in a cruiserweight division domestically that doesn't get a lot of coverage. Yeah, cruiserweight division has long been quite a strange division. It doesn't have the glamour of the heavyweights, um, all the money. Um, most guys that are big enough for cruiser, they go to heavy. You know, they build themselves up because that's where the money is and the, the big fights. Um, so it's never really been a fashionable. Even David Hay, you know, who came from the cruiserweights. Um, he wasn't a, really a big name at that time, even though he did very well. You know, mm. uh, won European title, won the world title eventually, and um, it didn't really kick off for him until he became like you know the heavyweight that beat the giant uh, uh, Valuev. Mm. Um, if we can just talk about you're talking about David Hay there, um, betting advice. Whoever listened to you a few weeks ago would have made a lot of money. Yeah, uh, the there seems to be another. You said shortly after that there won't be another bet like that this year. Lo and behold, we have Ben Day and Floyd Moore, which is an interesting. It is an interesting one. I've managed both of those boxers earlier in their careers, and now boxing each other. Um, Floyd Moore knock him out. I like Ben Day. He's a friend of mine. Mm. Um, I hope he proves me wrong. If he does, I'll be very happy that he proved me wrong. Um, not that I want anything, I don't want Floyd to get beat, but I just, I, I think Floyd knocks him out, unfortunately. Mm. No, no, like I say, whoever wins, I just hope the best one wins, and I hope they both come out in one piece, and mm. you know, sort of, the, 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 they're okay. But uh, for me, Floyd will stop him. He will stop him. Well, you heard it here first. Once again. <laughs> on the Hellraiser blogs. Mickey, thank you very much for your time this week and we'll catch up with you next week.